He was top last weekend, but lost it to Scotty Scheffler. McElroy will go back to number one if he wins the PGA Tour Invitational event in California, which tees off a little later. World number one Ronnie O'Sullivan is into the last 16 of the Welsh Open snooker, as is John Higgins. Uh, the tournament that delivers shocks, though, just keeps on coming. World number two Mark Selby and the defending Welsh Open champion Joe Perry. Well, they've packed their bags and they're on their way home. Back to football, Borussia Dortmund beat Chelsea 1-0 in their Champions League last 16 clash last night. Remember, first leg, this Benfica won 2-0 at Bruges. Britain's uh, Keely Hodgkinson... Uh, her great start to the athletics year continues, the 20-year-old setting a world-leading time in the 800 metres to win at the World Indoor Tour event in France. 1 minute 57.71 seconds, the time there. And England very much on top in the first day of the first test against New Zealand in Mount uh, Manganui. The tourists declaring on 325 for 9 the, a few moments ago had reduced the host New Zealand to 33 for 3. Phil, thank you very much indeed. Rory McIlroy talking about things being passed around like a hot potato has made my stomach rumble, I have to say. Uh, talking of sport, Andy Murray tweeted yesterday saying, interesting vacancy. I was looking to get into politics when I finished playing tennis. Andy, I think you may have just opened a Pandora's box there. Sure-footed normally with his tweets and his statements. Uh, that is inviting stuff from all angles, I suspect. Nevertheless, interesting thought, isn't it, Andy Murray? Leading a country. Um, what attributes could be transferable plenty of them I suppose we'll have more on all of this to come in the next half hour time now though half past eight on digital radio FM your smart speaker and online BBC Radio Scotland for this morning's news and sport for the borders with Angela Suave. Borders politicians have been reacting to Nicola Sturgeon's shock announcement yesterday. She's to step down as SNP leader and First Minister. Fellow nationalist Christine Graham, MSP, entered Parliament with Ms Sturgeon in 1999. She says she's served Scotland with distinction and showcased the best of our nation to the world, highlighting achievements such as the delivery of the Borders Railway, early learning and childcare, new social security benefits and free prescriptions. Ms Graham lamented the loss of Ms Sturgeon's compassion, intellect, foresight, energy and drive. But also, she says, no one has borne more of the intense scrutiny, criticism and even brutality to which prominent politicians are subjected. Borders Conservative MP John Lamont says, despite their political differences, Ms Sturgeon has been a formidable First Minister for many years, but he wants her successor to work more constructively with the UK government, rather, he says, than obsessing about independence. And local Tory MSP Rachel Hamilton says it's the right time for Ms Sturgeon to resign. Her record hasn't lived up to expectations, pointing to what Ms Hamilton calls recent disastrous policy choices. In other news, a woman's been arrested and charged in connection with a fatal crash in the borders just over a year ago. 30-year-old Stuart Finney from Gaventon in Berwickshire died at the scene on the Melrose Bypass. He was driving a Seat Ibiza in collision with a Mini on the 6091 on the 1st of February 2022. Police Scotland confirm a 58-year-old woman has now been charged. A Kelso man convicted of two sexual offences involving youngsters will be sentenced next month. Reports were ordered into David Bailey at Jedburgh Sheriff Court after he was found guilty of causing a young person under 13 and another under 16 to participate in sexual activity. 47-year-old Bailey was cleared of causing another child to look at a sexual image and communicate indecently. Councillors in the borders will discuss their budget for the coming year next Thursday at a full meeting of the authority. The financial plans are likely to pass without much challenge. Members of all parties were able to put aside their political differences to work together on the proposals. Council tax, therefore, is set to rise by 5%, the highest for over 15 years. Years. That's necessary, according to Council Leader Ewan Jordan, to protect frontline services, major projects such as replacement schools and care villages, and to leave cash for a revamp of local funding, particularly around transport. Things like the one-off investment into the small schemes, which is now the Community Enhancement Fund of 178000 if that will be felt directly in communities because it enhances communities. We're looking at the Demand Response Travel Pilot Scheme, which is down in Eyemouth at the moment, in Berwickshire area, which is £304,000. Keeping that going and hopefully we'll be able to roll that out across the region in future years. We're looking at sustaining the 101-102 bus service in Tweeddale, which again was a highly charged issue in that region, but we've been able to work hard to bring that there. 
and that £304,000 to keep Berkshire's Pingo bus service going will be discussed by a full meeting of Scottish Borders Council this morning ahead of next week's meeting on the budget. Also on the agenda is whether to increase social work charges for non-residential care and funding for improvements to Sackirk's Victoria Park. The caravan site's returning to tourist use this spring, having been the border's official travel site during the pandemic. Forestry and Land Scotland have discovered a jigsaw puzzle piece shaped woodland area near Jedburgh. The team stumbled across this while carrying out a survey at Swinney Plantation, Plantation, part of a land management review. The earthwork structures about five acres and an additional three puzzle piece areas have been found within five kilometres apart from each other. On ground level, the shape's invisible. From a height, it becomes much clearer. Forestry and Land Scotland found mature beech trees in the wood bank estimated to be 180 years old, giving an indication of how long the feature has been there. Planning Forester for Forestry and Land Scotland, Tom Harvey. The first one at Swinney um, was found during initial scoping surveys um, to do with the land management plan revision for, for the Swinney land management area. Uh, and then subsequently we've, we've actually found um, about six or so others in the local area now. If you're still to get your most recent COVID booster or the Swinter's flu jag, there's a drop-in vaccination clinic this afternoon at Selkirk's Victoria Hall from 3.30 and quarter to five, and another in People's Drill Hall on Sunday afternoon. In racing, in-form Hoyt jockey Jason Hart cruised home to a five-length win on Krona in the concluding middle-distance handicap at Kempton last night. And looking ahead, staying in racing, Kelso races open their gates on Friday at noon for the time-form chase day. The first race of the day starts at five past two, seven races throughout the day in the last at five past five. Race times, though, could change nearer the time. Now, Callum McCall has the border's weather. Mostly cloudy this morning, with a little patchy light rain or drizzle possible. Drier this afternoon, but still rather cloudy with any sunshine limited. Highs of 7 to 9 degrees Celsius. Tonight becoming increasingly unsettled with rain spreading in and strong winds developing. Very windy tomorrow with a Met Office yellow high wind warning valid for strong, very gusty winds. Early rain will clear to brighter conditions with a few blustery showers. After a very mild start, temperatures lowering to 7 to 9 degrees Celsius. BBC Radio Scotland's weather for the borders. There'll be more from the borders at half past 12. BBC News for Scotland. And you're listening to Good Morning Scotland, the time now, 24 minutes to nine. And we've been reflecting all morning on Nicola Sturgeon's resignation and what it means for the SNP as a party at all levels of government. Susan Aiken is the SNP leader of Glasgow City Council. She's with us now. Good morning to you, Susan. Good morning. Were you surprised by yesterday's announcement? Yes, I was. Uh, I didn't know it was coming. I was surprised and shocked and, and, and very upset. Um, I'm going to miss her enormously um, as First Minister and as party leader. She's been um, the outstanding politician of her generation, not just in Scotland, but, but right across these islands. And I have to say she's been an absolutely brilliant colleague on a personal level. She's provided me and many of my colleagues in the Glasgow SNP with support and encouragement um, far beyond the call of duty. Um, you know, she's, she has taken time out of, of her incredibly busy life to provide that support. Um, and you know, she, she's still going to be the MSP for Glasgow Southside. We'll still be colleagues in that respect. But um, it, it won't be quite the same. She's she's going to be missed by a great great many people. Yeah, um, Nicola Sturgeon's been seen as a, as a role model for, for many women as being a strong female um, leader. Was she able to, to help you with that in any way, shape or form, given that you're taking over the biggest city council? Yes, absolutely. She she was incredibly and, and has remained incredibly generous with her with her time and her encouragement. Um, she is, you know, I'm going to be absolutely shameless about this. She is absolutely an inspiration for me and, and will continue to be so. Um, I'm often in awe of watching her when she uh, handles um, media questions, for example, when she's doing interviews, when she's giving speeches. Um, her, her combination of qualities that she brings um, is is what has marked her out so much um, as a as a politician, and um, I, she's she's been a great inspiration. She's blazed a trail for women, 